לחיים, לחיים, לחיים. לחיים, לחיים, לחיים. So this song Menschen verstehen seine Mischamschen. Wo? Fram Benklach, da kommt Fram. Oh, 
Verstehen sehr viele Länder. Der und jene, sehr viele Länder. Keine Frage. Noch ein, noch ein, noch ein. I was told that tonight, I will verbring it tonight, and it's also connected. With the fact that you had the schools to finish the first part of Tanya, the first 53 program of Tanya. The word Tanya, the Oisi is the word is Tof Nun Yud Aleph. If you juggle it around a little, you get another word which is called Aeson. Aleph Yud Tof Langanun. Aeson means strength. Starkeit. See them say that why did the Alter start with the word Tanya? Because Tanya means a Braise. And this what it says over here, it's not considered a Braise of Pihaloch. And the question is, how come the Alter uses the word Tanya? And some of the Alter see them from the time that the Alter said that the Alter wanted to hint to us and say that one of the purposes of the union of Tanya is to reveal the ace and the strength, the koyach that every yid has, that he should be able to conduct himself and live according to what the Abishtim wants. So by saying the words and learning the words of Tanya, that reveals the inner power, the inner koyach that a person has from his neshama, and mail it, and all that comes out that and uh, you should be able to overcome all difficulties. So that's why the Alter Rebbe put down the word Tanya by saying the oasis of Tanya, you will reveal your, uh, your, your strength. The Rebbe Rashab, the Rebbe Rashab said that when a person walks in the street and he says by heart, a few lines of Tanya says the Rebbe Rashab that he should know that at that very moment he connects himself to the Alter Rebbe. And the Alter Rebbe is walking, as the Rebbe Rashab said this, and the Alter Rebbe is walking alongside with him wherever he is. And that's how great the union of Tanya is, that just by saying the words of Tanya, you connect yourself to the Bala Tanya, to the Alta Rebbe. And the Rebbe Rasab says, a gate meeting there. He walks along, along with you where you are going. And that's why in Lubavitch, when Lubavitch and Yeshiva Temkrimu was established, one of the first things that the Mashpim, explained to Talmudim that they have to try to study by heart the first 12 program of Tanya, and wherever they go, they should see you have words of Tanya in which to say. And so as you make a seum of Tanya, the seum is not a seum. The Rebbe said a seum means a beginning for the next step. The Rebbe used to tell the graduation classes that don't think that because you graduated, you stop learning. Graduation prepares you that you should be able to start now a higher and a deeper level of learning of study. The same thing, Bishas Mitzvot is a seam on the Sefer. It's not Hasha Sholem that's finished, and that's it. When you learn the Tanya again, hopefully you will see deeper interpretations, deeper instructions, and deeper guidelines that al Tareb is saying in Tanya. And this one you can continue the next part, the next part of Chinuch Koton, and then the Shara and the Shara all that will be on a higher level. 
What was made one of the major inyonim that the Baal Shem Tov revealed to us? The Baal Shem Tov's neshama, as he himself wrote, preceded being in this physical world a few hundred years before the Balshanta was born. This Yid that had this Nishoma was a very positive, simple Yid, but he was a very great Yid Hashemayim. And one of his specialties was that he didn't want people to know how religious he is, how frum he is, everything he tried to do in a concealed way. And there's a whole mindset that came, and this Yid stood up against a certain test that was given to him. And when his Nishomi came back to Ganeit and writes to Baal Shem Tev, that the Malochim did not know on what level of Gan Eden he is worthy of being for his behavior, for his conduct on this world. And they brought an Ashoma to the Bezden Shalmaila. The Bezden Shalmaila listened to the Malachim and, and they said, if that's the case, this Nishoma will be brought down in this world again, will be connected to a great Tzaddik, and that great tzaddik will introduce a deeper and more meaningful explanation of Taylor and how the every Yid can always connect himself, is always connected, can always reveal his connection. And the Baal Shem said that he is the one who has that neshama that had that schus to have the best neshama, the paskin, and say that it should come down. And that's why the Baal Shem revealed a deeper and a more meaningful and something which relates to each and every one of us what the Torah is teaching us and what the Torah is telling us. One of the major revelations that the Baal Shem revealed was the mitzvah of Abbas Yisrael. See, it's a mitzvah in Torah of Lorech Komecho. The Baal Shem wanted that that mitzvah should be felt by every single Yid. He wanted that every Yid should reveal within himself the awe, the love that he has for another Yid. And as the Rabbeim, the Alter Rebbe, the Mithler Rebbe, and all the Tzamech Tzedek, in different ways explain how is it possible that I should have a love for someone who's not a member of my family, and he's in a stranger to the extent that the Malchemtum, the Alter Rebbe said that even if there's a Yid from the end of the world and you never heard of him and he never heard of you, you have the mitzvah of Abbas and Sroh to love that Yid. How is that possible? So the Alter Rebbe in Pedic Lamed Beis, in Pedic Lev of Tanya, it says that being that call on the Shomis Mas Imais, all the Shomis come from the same source. And at that, in that source, all the Nishomas were one. So one is one that means this, every other Yid is a part of yourself that in your origin, in your source, and where you're coming from, all the Yid were united. And that's why it is possible for Yid to love another Yid, because actually that other Yid is a part of yourself. He's not a separate entity, he's a part of himself, like a body has different parts. It has a head, it has hands, it has feet, and so forth and so on. Every part of the body is part of the one body. Although that this one has this function, that one has that function, but basically it's one in him. And that is why the Balshampton wanted that every year to try to develop within himself that type of Abbas is role. And as we find, Benigei to Matna Teire. The Chazal tells us that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted and waited when it would be the proper time to give the Eden the Teire, as it says in the Posuk, Vayichan Shom Yisroel, 
And the singular, if you speak in a model plural, it should have said, Vayachnu Shom Yisrael. So what does Rashi say on Vayichun? Kulam Kayish Echod Belev Echod. The Yidin standing by Har Sinai were so united that as if there were only one person. There wasn't individuals. And Mishas the Abish the saw that all the Eden are united as one, that's when the Abish has said it's the proper time to give Taylor to Eden. Why? Because the Rambam writes, as Nitna Taylor, the Harba Sholem Ba'ilum. The Abish wanted that there should be peace in the world. Peace means to be that you live together, you live as one, there's no animosity, there's no hatred, there's no husband Sholem, there's differences. And therefore, the Abish so Zogta Baal Shem that this is what every year, the more we're going to show it in front of others is wrong, that will bring closer also the coming of Mashiach. I want to give you one or two examples what the Rebbe's level of Abbas Yisrael was. Of course, it was much more than what we saw. One day, we received a phone call that a woman unfortunately fell on her face and after the diagnosis of the doctors, they said in order to replace her face, she has to have four operations. So first of all, they wanted to ask the Rebbe whether they should make the operations and if the Rebbe said yes, they wanted the Rebbe's brocha that it should succeed and eventually she should have her face back. When the Rebbe was told that this woman needs for operation, the Rebbe said, Vos? What? What are you telling me? She needs for operations? So I said, this is what the doctor said. So the Rebbe said, if that's the case, even though tomorrow is not a scheduled day that I usually go to the oil, but I'm going to go to the oil tomorrow, Mr. The Rebbe went to the oil, and when the Rebbe goes to the oil, he goes in the early morning, and he comes down late, sometimes 11 o'clock, sometimes 8 o'clock. <coughs> when the Rebbe came back from the oil, he asked, call the doctor and find out what her situation is now. And the doctor told me that now she could get along with three operations. <laughs> so I told the Rebbe, so the Rebbe said that means she still needs three operations? So in case that's the case, we'll go tomorrow again. And when the Rebbe came back from the oil, the doctor said all she needs is two operations. He came back the third time, the doctor said all she needs is one operation. And she came back, he came back the fourth time, the Rebbe said she doesn't have any operation, the doctor said. I'm not here to speak about the ability of the Rebbe, but we have to understand something. The day when we go to the oil, we don't eat that day. We only drink something. That means to say that the Rebbe fasted actually four consecutive days in order to spare a woman an operation. The level of Avos Yisrael, the Rebbe wanted that she shouldn't have to have an operation because as good as the operation is, it always has rebe, uh, something but the residues, what the residue, and the Rebbe wanted to avoid this woman from having operation, so the Rebbe fasted four consecutive days in order that she should not have an operation. I think that is uh, an example of what means obviously Israel. There was one year in the month of Tishrei that 1,700 guests came from all over the world to be by the Rebbe. Chalamot Sukis, the Rebbe told me that he wants that each of the people that are here, that he wants to see them individually, personally, which we call Yechidis, which I'm sure you know what Yechidis means, the private session that you have with the Rebbe. So I tell the Rebbe, I don't know how in one night the Rebbe will be able to accommodate 1,600-700 people. So the Rebbe said, what would you want to do? <laughs> what would I want to do to make it easier? So I said, if the Rebbe will give two nights, so then we'll divide it. 
that's 900 people, 800 people going one night, the next night, how are you going to arrange who should go the first night and the second night? So I'll sit on the mail, make a, a, a lottery. Whoever picks out the first night will go the first night. And the Rebbe said, okay. So the first night was a Tuesday night. And the Rebbe used to start his Yechidus 8 o'clock in the evening. The Rebbe started Yechidus 8 o'clock in the evening and finished 10.30 the next morning, Wednesday morning. And and the, the, in, in baseball, they call the seventh innings of space. Seventh in, in innings space, you know what that means. That the players take a risk. So I went into the Rebbe and wanted to have the seventh innings of space. The Rebbe should give 15, 20 minutes that he should be able to rest. And the Rebbe asked, why do you want the 20 minutes? So I say, the way it looks, we're first going to finish very late. And the Rebbe says, do you want because of my rest? The people shall have to wait 20 minutes longer. There's no seventh innings. The Rebbe knew about baseball. And then I'll tell your mice about it soon. <laughs> and, and the Rebbe said that no interruptions continue. Okay. Came Wednesday night. So I asked the Rebbe, maybe instead of Wednesday night, the Rebbe should have the next Achilles Thursday night. And the Rebbe asked, why? I say the Rebbe shall have one night for himself to rest. And the Rebbe says, you don't hear how you yourself are contradicting, contradicting yourself. He says, many of these people, the guests, come from Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael, Sunday is a work day. If they take it Thursday night, they will not be able to get back before Sunday night or Monday morning. You want that because of my rest, the people shall lose another day of work. You want that because of me, the family should be in all the Shabbos without their father or the beloved ones or whoever it is. In those in common the consideration, the next Shachidus will be Wednesday night as it was discussed. The Rebbe started at 8 o'clock the Shachidus and he finished Thursday morning 11 o'clock in the morning. Do you imagine what that means? One night, ten and a half hours, the second night, eleven hours, and the next morning when the Rebbe came, when he came Wednesday, he went home for two hours, and he came back, and it was a regular scheduled day. He learned how to shiur him, he answered on the letters, he answered on questions, he wrote letters, as if nothing happened. He came Wednesday, or Thursday morning, it was all bizarre. He davened, he had two hours when he was home, and then a regular day as if nothing happened. Why am I telling all this? The Shasta Balshemta said that he wants that each and every one should feel the importance and what it means, Abba Sister Rome. Here you have a live example of someone who experienced in his personal life, and this is one of many, many stories of situations where the Rebbe gave of himself completely in order to help other people. The Rebbe's Avas Yisroel extended, as the Balsam says, people that you don't even know, but you heard that there's a yid, you have to try to help him. I don't know if you heard that in Etz Yisroel, there's a vision, it's a Rebbe. We once met at a Simcha, he told me, I'm going to tell you a story about your Rebbe, which you don't even know. And this is a true story. I have one of Machsidim who told me the story that happened with him. He is a businessman, and he traveled in different countries, different cities, different states. One time, while he was on business in Los Angeles, Loyaleno, he suffered a heart attack. So immediately, he was admitted to the hospital, and the dogs were taken care of him. This course it tells the Vinyan Sarebbe that one of the nurses, Hotzechonga Chepet, wanted to have something to do with him. And he was trying to explain, it doesn't come to consideration, it's against it, it's against everything, and don't even speak about it. It's not anything to even consider. And he tells the Rebbe that one night, 
She came, he said, I'm not leaving this room till you do what I want you to do. He didn't know what to do. Suddenly the phone rings. He picks up the receiver, and the one who called says, my name is Chodakov. I am the secretary of the Lubaba Rebbe. And the Lubaba Rebbe to call, told me to call you, that you should get dressed and leave the house of the immediately. Don't ask permission, don't ask any questions, but leave that place immediately. It says the Vinyan Sarebbe, the Lubaba Rebbe never had anything to do with him. He never wrote to Lubaba Rebbe and went to Lubaba Rebbe. The, the Vinyan Rebbe is telling this to me. Lubaba Rebbe is sitting in Crown Heights. Here is a Yid in Los Angeles who has to be saved from Chasvashalim not to transgress such a series from the Gimel of Avedis a person is. So he's the Rebbe sitting and he sees that a Yid in Los Angeles has to be consulted and has to be given an aid to how to avoid this thing. He takes care of it. So do you know what that means? The Rebbe is sitting here. He sees everything goes on. And from my personal experience that I was in contact with different shaluchim, with different people, which the Rebbe told him to go to different places to do different things, we saw that the Rebbe has the ability, as the Chazal say, in regards to Odomerishin, so the Razals, Chazals, and Chazals, and Chazals, and Chazals, it said, the Razals say that Odomerishin, Hoyamabit, Misaifa, Oilum, Vaat, Saifa. Odomerishin was able to see from one end of the world to the world. So the Mephoshim say it was not a Inyam from the Vuv that he was able to see. Prophet. It's with his physical eyes, Odo Marishin was able to see all over the world. Comes the Mizritch Magid, and he says, we saw this by the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov was able with his physical eyes to see all over the world. Comes the Alter Rebbe, and the Alter Rebbe says, and we saw this by our Rebbe, by the Mizritch Magid. Comes the Tzemach Tzedek, the grandson of the Alter Rebbe, and he says, we saw this by my grandfather, by the Alter Rebbe. So we know that the Tzadikim have the ability to see all over the world. There was once a Maisel with one of our Shaluchim in another country. I'll tell you, Bikitsu, the Maisel. There was a, a woman that became very, very sick, seriously sick. Friday night, the family got a phone call from the hospital that her condition deteriorated to an extent that in a short while, there won't be one to say goodbye to. So if you want to come and say goodbye, you must be here within the next half hour. When they came to the hospital, the nurses told them, calm down, the situation settled a little bit. It's not as serious as it was a half hour ago. They had asked me, at Mitzvah Shabbos, that I should call, give, it, uh, give the Rebbe a, a note with her name and tell the Rebbe that her situation is still critical and we have to have a bracha. And listen what the Rebbe tells me. He says, call him and tell him that I will be my, my shver, I'll be my, I'll, I'll ask for a bracha. And tell him as follows. Friday night, between 5 and 5.30, her situation was so critical that the doctors almost gave up on her. You think that what stabilized her condition was the medical treatment that the doctors gave her? And the Rebbe said, nay, that's not the reason. The reason is because I thought about her and I was a mispowell for her. Now let me ask you a question. Friday night, first of all at that time there were no faxes, there was no WhatsApp, there was no when they got some Iceland. And even if it was, you don't use them on Friday night. What does every year do Friday night, especially a tzaddik? Friday night, he sits and he learns. Five o'clock in the middle of the learning, the Rebbe sees 
that there's a woman in another country who is in such a critical condition and the Rebbe stops learning and the Rebbe is misbowled for her. And then the Rebbe says, tell him, why am I revealing to him what I see what's going on someplace else? And the Rebbe says, I've heard it. Ich will am a soll wissen, as von mir kämpfe sich nicht behalten. I want that people should know you cannot hide from me. Wherever you're going to be, I will see what's going on. So if we see that Mitzad, this what the Rebbe sees, he's most powerful for her, his obvious role is to a woman that's in another country. I don't know if she ever had a Kaishan Kum, she didn't have a connection to the Rebbe. So we see that when we say that the Baal Shem said wanted to instill into every Yid, the Inya from Abbas and Sarol, here we have, I want to say, a living example, a pale Gamash like an example of a Yid that his, all his Kayakhus that he had with all the blessings that the Kodesh who gave him above and beyond natural things, he utilized that to help other people. Who make us trickle hefsing and then even and so on the everybody on the high and the high. Is <laughs> Ya 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 
This is a drive. This is his shirt and Tanya. It goes. It's a drive. It's a drive. It's a drive. It's a drive. I am a man, I am a man, I am a man, I am a man, The architect who did the Tasha. The architect who did I don't hear now. You have to excuse me. I have difficulty. Hey, hey, no, 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 Kuti Amarim, shoot him, Tanu. Yes, was schlecht und wollte nur bei dir zu verlaufen. Was? Bei dir zu verlaufen, wenn ich schon so eine gewisse Montagne, wenn ich mal so, wenn ich nur mal sage, größer Gott, mal eingestellt, mal klein zu verlaufen. Ja, ist noch noch kleiner. Lechaim, Lechaim. I told the rabbi, I'm sure you all heard of the Badiyot of Rav, the Badiyot of Tzadik. When the Alter Rebbe sent the Tanya to him, he wanted to get his Haskoma, his consent. He went through it, and he says, they took such a great Rebbein Shalom and put him into a small book. If he would have seen this, <laughs> what would he have said? <laughs> Being that Chaya Elo is the Yom Aladdin's from the Baal Shem Tov, so speaking about Abbas and Srom, or myself from the Baal Shem Tov, which have a very, very important lesson for each and every one of us. And this is a story that was told by Chassidim, which means that it's an authentic story. In one of the towns in Europe and wherever it was, there was uh, one individual who was Baruch Hashem, blessed by Kodesh Baruch Hu, and he used to support many of the people that needed his help. One day, one of the merchants came to him and asked him to give him a loan of 30 rubles 
he should be able to buy the supply and uh, supplies and milk to sell it. Tells him this yid, my daughter was getting married tonight. And at those times there was no caterer, there was no seamstresses. Everything had to be done by the members of the family. So he tells this yid, we are very, very busy getting ready for the wedding. This one is doing that. If you come tomorrow, we we'll only a problem. So the yid left when he needed today. So he got this one, gave him 10 little, that one. As time went on, people noticed a tremendous change. This person who was rich, his earnings were going down, and this merchant was getting richer and richer. It came to a point that this former, so to say, lost almost everything, and this merchant became, so this former Gevir came to the Balsham and he said, what did I do? I, there was such a Balsitok, and that's what I'm crying myself, but what did I do? And the Balsham says, do you remember that on the day of your daughter's wedding, this person came and asked you for 30 ruble loan? How long does it take to give a loan of 30 ruble? Not even a minute, a few seconds. What did you tell him? <coughs> came that old Shem said that there was a very big rash on my a very big upset on my life. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu chooses <coughs> certain individuals from all the billions of people that he has, and he gives them that extra bracha that they should be on a higher level of the purpose of that is that they should share it with others if not and Hashem so to say has a belief in this person that he will be able to share it people the Malachim and the Neshamas came to God's Baruch what kind of person is this you entrusted him and look a person needed 30 rubu and all would take a few seconds and he missed up on it He's not worthy of having that blessing. So the Bezan Shalmaila said, yes, they're right. So they took away from him, from you, and they gave it to him. So he asked the Balsantev, how can I get back my wealth? He says, if you're going to meet this person and ask him to help you, and he is going to answer you the same way, things will come back. No, how do you do it? So they wish to help he found out in a few weeks there's going to be a wedding that this this gentleman is marrying off his daughter. And he's going to stand under the chuppah. Under the chuppah, he's going to hold in one hand his candle, and in the second hand, he's going to have the, holding the collar under her hand. And by the way, may I interject? If you take out the shulchanoruch yeridei, you'll see on one side there's a peter's taz, to resolve, and the other one is from the Shach. In the Shulchan Aruch Eben Ezer, where they speak about the dinam of a hoop of a wedding, the Taz asks a question, why is it a minhig that you have to hold the chosin and kalim, you have to have them bring him to the hoop? If they decide they want to get married, they'll run to the hoop, they want to get married. Says the Taz, that we're really very concerned, maybe at the last minute, the one to back out. As they look the Taz and Aloha. In order to be sure, that's what you have to do. It's a snitch stum. So this that we hold it is part of the mitzvah. So he thought the Hosan, the, the younger man will come with his collar or the Hosan. As it happens, he's there by the chupa, and here this Feltman is coming, and he says to himself, Bor Hashem, the moment came, I'm going to get back my riches. He goes over to him and says, Berale, Give me that piece of cent, for Rubum. Yeah, Zaya say good, please hold my candle. And he puts his hand in his pocket and he takes out what he wanted and he gives it to him that he'd fainted on the spot. He came back to the Balsham and what do I do now? So the Balsham said, one minute, I want to tell you what you have learned from this lesson. The Abish the knew, saw that you were busy preparing for the wedding. And still, by divine providence, the Avisha presents you with a situation where you could help another Yid. Didn't the Avisha know that you're busy? 
If that's the case, why did the Abishta present you? Because the Abishta wanted to see whether you take out a few seconds in order to help another Yid Mitzad Abbas Yisrael. You failed in that. Better did not fail in it. Better did exactly what was expected of him as a Yid Mitzad Abbas Yisrael. Go on, she asked him about strength and went work it out. So when I see them tell this Meisler, they say, what does this Meisler tell you? Being that everything is nothing that happens in the world without the Ebishter. The Chazal say, Ein Olam Neikif Be'etz Boi Ad Shemachrizan Olam Amayla. When I shake my finger, because in heaven they wanted I should shake my finger now. It's not done on my own. Says that this Meister teaches us that as busy you may not be, and it could even be a mitzvah like this he is under the chuppah, he was doing a mitzvah, holding the candles a mitzvah, holding the cow under her arm as a mitzvah, and still he said to himself, the Abish sees I'm doing mitzvahs. I didn't have to give him because I'm doing No. The Abish represented me with a situation where somebody needs help. I have to put everything aside. Don't tell him, come back a few hours from now. I'll have my supper, my dinner, and I'll have my rest. And the will was the turn. I'll you, no, you come, I'll help you. So this Maisa teaches us when the Malshem says that the Abbas Yisrael means you have to sacrifice yourself, Abbas Yisrael. You have to forego things for what's good for you in order to help another Yid. And that's what Al Tarebbe writes in Tanya, in Pedro Mabed Beis, how much a Yid has to give himself to help another Yid. So I made some of the things, hopefully, that those who participated in the Shiurim, hopefully they will add more to it, what do we go away with? My father, although Sholem, always used to say, we're now going to have a month of a lot of Yom and Tevim, and after Yom Tov, you speak to people, yeah, the Yom Tov went past. My father says, Chas Sholem, don't say the Yom Tov passed. Ask yourself, what did the Yom Tov add to you? What did the Yom Tov contribute to you more, a better understanding, a better feeling, what it means to be a Yid, what a Yid has to do? The Yom Tov was given, not just us to have the Yom Tov, to have the Sudha, and have this, and forgot about it. Just so when you eat, the food adds to the health of your body. The Yom Tov has to add to you, the Zohar Bazach, even more so. When you learn the Ingen and Tere, you have to ask yourself, the Balsam Tov said, when it came to Mount Nasera, it says, Onoichi Hashem Elikecho in the singular. According to grammar, being that it was spoken to plural, it should have said, I have it should have said, Onoichi Hashem Elikechem in the plural. Why did it say in the singular? So what do our Chazal say in Medrash? Kol Echod Nidmeloi Sherak Itra Kodesh Baruchum Medaber. Every Yid, the 600,000 people, and the women and everybody else that were there, when the Rebish said these words on Eich Hashem, each one felt that the Rebish is speaking personally only to him and to nobody else. Says about Samson, what is the message trying to tell us? That everything and every word in every letter that's written in the is written to everyone personally. Even when it speaks about Koyanam, it speaks about Levine, every Yid has in him something which has the shachos with Koyan. Koyan is Isha Chesed, the Inyam from kindness, that's a Koyan, so every Yid has kindness. A Levi is the Inyam of fear for Akkadish Baruch Yid, every Yid has a Levi in him. So Baal Shem said that every word in Torah is written to you personally. Maybe this is what the, what the, the Baal Shem Tov wants of us. We understand that it's just we have an uh, Indian from a mitzvah from Abbas and Saro, It's a mitzvah, uh, my personal mitzvah, which I have to try to develop and help others. Maybe these are some of the things that we now learn that you learn from Tanya. What you should ask yourself: What the Baal Shem said from every person? Ask yourself: What is this teaching now? Then there's a famous saying from the Baal Shem, which the Rebbe mentioned, 
unlimited times. The Baal Shem says that everything that Hashem makes that a person should see or a person should hear, the reason for that is that he has to ask himself, what is this helping me that I should improve myself in serving Hashem? Everything that has by divine providence, the Abish to wanted I should see this situation, I have to ask myself, what is this teaching me and guiding me better? I hear something, I have to ask myself. The Shas will learn it's even more so. So these are some of the things that we have to take with us. And each one should know that he took a line, finished the 53 program of Tanya. That should be the basis that now that he's going to go to the high level of Chinuch Kotun, this is what he has from the Lamed Nim Gimel Parokim that should help him that he should get a better and a deeper understanding of the Chinuch Kotun, whether he would, if, if, if he would have learned the Chinuch Kotun without the 53 Parokim of Tanya. So these are some of the things that the, the Rabbeim, the Balshem and all the Rabbeim until our Rebbe are trying to help us to understand what HaKadosh Baruch Hu expects of us, and being that He expects of us, He gives us the ability that we should be able to do it. As the Rebbe once said, a very said, I'm going to give a very mundane example. A family calls up a plumber that we're having a problem in a plumbing. Will the owner of the plumbing supply send a man without the material, without all the tools that he needs, go fix it? Of course not. How can it when it was my hands? If a human being realizes that if you demand of somebody, he has to provide him with all the necessary ability that he should be able to do it, how much more so? If HaKadosh Baruch Hu asks us to do a mitzvah, he be, be, before that, he gave us the ability that we should be able to do the mitzvah. As the Gemara says, doesn't demand of a yid something which he cannot do. If the tailor says you have to do this mitzvah at a certain time, you should know sometimes you'll have to reveal from within yourself a more inner feeling or more inner power to overcome the obstacle, the thing that's holding back. But don't come and say, I cannot do it, because if you cannot do it, you would have been asked to do it. So these are some of the ideas what Chassidus is coming, is teaching us and trying to strengthen the Yid and help the Yid that he should be able to fulfill the purpose of him being on this physical world, on this God's mystical world. The Ebesha takes on the Shoma, what we say every morning in, in the Birchon Sashachar, Elikai Neshoma Shonosatabi, the Neshoma that you put into my physical body. And that neshama gives me the life force that I have. That's why when the Rebbe told Shluchim, go out and try to encourage another Yid to do a mitzvah. To explain to him, you're not adding something to him which he doesn't have. You're trying to reveal what he really is. Every Yid his neshama wants to do what the Abishra wants. As the Ramam says it in Halacha, that every yid has the true desire. And sometimes the Yitzhahorah covers up on it. So when we ask a yid to do a mitzvah, you're not asking him to do something which is outside of you, and you're adding it to you. What we're asking to do, reveal what you have or what you are. And then says the Rebbe, that that neshama that a yid has, regardless of what that person conducted himself at a certain point, as the Gemara says, afal pisha choto, even if chasvisholmi he transgressed one of the three most serious avedis, as we know, what does the Gemara say? Afal pisha choto Yisraelu. We know we say in the davening, matayvu lecha Yaakov. The Yidin are divided into two categories. There's one category of Yidin that they are the Yaakov and one category of Yisroel. What does that mean? Yaakov comes from the word Oke, which is the soul, the lowest body, and that soul is connected to the ground. 
the Ayin that they occupy themselves as Hashgoch and Protes made it, that they should be more occupied with the physical world. And then you have Yidin Yisrael, that they are mainly the Rabbonim, the Rosh Hashivas, the Talmidim, they're occupied with the higher. Every Yid has to have both. The Yaakov has to have times for davening, he has to have times for learning, he has to have time for doing mitzvahs. The one who is learning, who also has to have time to occupy himself with the physical world, to make the physical world for a domain for God is Baruch Hu. Says the Gemara, Afal Pisha Chorta Yisrolu. Why doesn't it say if he has to show him? transgressed one of the three major Avedas, he should be called only Yaakov, the Loma level. Why does the Gemara say Yisrael? Says the Rebbe, because that Yid, at that very moment when he did what he did, he was still connected to HaKadosh Baruch like the biggest Tzaddik. And that's why the Baal Shem Tov says, you have to love a Rosh Gomor like a Tzaddik Gomor. Because inwardly, in the essence of the Yid, they both have this Neshama Kedoshah, and that Neshama Kedoshah, it can never be severed from a Kodesh Baruch Hu. That Neshama Kedoshah remains in its level of Kedoshah. Nothing's ever chipped away from it, as we call it. It remains there. And that's why, as you have to, we speak to a Yid, so the Rebbe says, the Rebbe, tell him we're trying to reveal what you really are. I was once invited in another country, and the Shaliyah said that there's a group of, they consider themselves, you know, on a higher level, the wealthy people, and they would like to have their own fabring, and I should try to explain to them what it means to be wealthy, what that means. So when I spoke to them, I explained to them this idea. An elderly woman in her 80s comes over to me, and says, now that I heard from you, that regardless of how my all my years, I had nothing to do with Hashem, I had nothing to do with mitzvahs, and you're telling me that my neshama is still the holy neshama, I am still connected to Hashem, I have to change. I have to do something about it. And she wants, I, so I, I connected her to the shaliyah. The shaliyah calls me, says, you don't know what happened over here. Whenever I ask this woman to put down, I'll, I'll buy her the candle, the, the menorah. I'll buy her the candles, I'll give her the matches. All she has to do out of Shabbos, 18 minutes before the ski, light a match, take the bracha, and light the candle. It's not going to cost you all the money, although she has a lot. It's not going to take that much time. Rabbi, don't bother me. I'll buy a mezuzah. Or at least one was put on the front of the police. Whatever I asked her to do a mitzvah, she said, I'm not, not for me. I asked her suddenly, you want to have a share in your house? You want to learn how to, you do have to, what happened over there? If I heard that regardless of all this, I still have an Ishama condition with me. My Ishama is connected to Hashem like any other tzaddik. There's nothing missing in my neshama. The time came, I should let my neshama conduct my life. This is what the Rebbe wants, that each and every one should understand. Try to, as much as we could call it, try to enter, go deeper into your neshama, knowing that you have that neshama, and that neshama will give you the encouragement, the strength, that you should be able to fulfill the purpose of what the Ebesh wants that will help you to overcome difficulties, overcome obstacles, whatever it may not be. And these are some of the main teachings that both the Baal Shem Tov and the Alter Rebbe wanted to encourage us, right, to inspire us and to inject into us what we, are, what we have to be. And that's why the Rebbe is, is doing more than, there was no other Rebbe of Lubavitch that extended and expand, expanded to the entire world, to practically, or maybe more practically, there isn't a country today where you don't have anything you describe.
We have 52 states this year. North Dakota has a Chabad house already, filled to 52 states. That every 50, well, one of the 52 states has a Chabad house. What was the purpose of that? The Rebbe said simply, I want that every year should be made knowledgeable of who he is. Not, we're adding nothing to him. We're not telling him to change himself. We're telling him to reveal himself. Feel who you really are. And this is what the Rebbe expects of each and every one of us in regard to themselves. And as a result of the mitzvah from Abbas Yisrael, that's why. And that's what the Rebbe told about mitzvah bochrim. You put on film. You can get some wine? Of course. No, no, no. As long as you can. The Rebbe said, what, every mitzvah has to teach us something. What could we learn? So we learn about film. It says, the Shabbat Amma. We have the Tfil and Shal Yad, and you have the Tfil and Shal Rosh. When it comes to Tfil and Shal Yad, it says in the Postlik, it shall be for you. When it comes to the Tfil and Shal Rosh, it says the Rebbe, what is this telling us? We cover up the Shal Yad, because the Shal Yad says the Rebbe, Every morning, when you put on the shayad, the film is telling you and teaching you that today you have to be better than yesterday. You have to try to elevate yourself to a higher level. You cannot be stagnant. You cannot be stagnant. You're going down. You have to always rise. And, and the film, when you put on your tool on your right on on the hand on your yad, that film is injecting to you, reminding you. You have to be better than yesterday. That's why you have a new mitzvah today. When you put on the shalrosh, because you have a mitzvah from Abbas Yisrael, you have to try in every day influence another person and help him what he needs. Now the Rebbe writes and brings down what it says, that one of the Amorim did not start davening before he gave Sotoka to a needy person. The Rebbe Rashab would never start davening before there was a poor man who didn't have what to eat and come to the house and the Rebbe gave him what to eat. There were times when they would come back and say, we don't find anybody. The Rebbe Rashab went out of his house and walked around all the streets of Lubavitch, he'll definitely find someone. This is what it says, that you don't start loving him before you help another person. The Rebbe Rashab lived with that. It became part of his life. That's, why was, that's how it has to be. All this is being discussed because we want the Baal Shem to be its higher level. We have to ask ourselves, why did the Yemen should send down the Baal Shem? And what are we gaining? What are we learning? What is the Baal Shem teaching us? What is the is Alta Rebbe teaching us? And these are only some of the lessons, some of the ideas which the Rabbi and the Baal Shem Tev and the Alta Rebbe until our Rebbe are emphasizing. And because the Inyan from Amazon's role, Mishat said, Zayn Kulonu Ke'echod, as we say in Sim Sholim, Damos was Borcheinu Ovinu. When can we all expect a bracha for God's call Yisrael? Mishas kolonu biyachad. Bochainu binu kolonu biyachad. Mishas all the Yidin will try to work. And that's why when it comes Chaydash Elul, it says in Sforim, in Chas V'Sholim, and during the year there was some reason for animosity, there was union from Hepech Ha'ava to one another. Chaydash Elul, the Chaydash Min HaNefesh, you have to try to correct that, remove all animosities. Remove all levels of contrary to Havas Asro in order of Shasad Kumar Shoshana. And we want that the Abish should bring down and give us the Brahma that it should be by Yihan Shom Isro, Kulam Ki Ishaqa Balevachod. I just want to give another story of how the Rebbe helped people. This story was told by a Chosid, but not all the Baba Chosid. I don't know if you heard, there are sons of Rebbe. In America, one sons of Rebbe in Essence at all. He's a sons of Chosid. He had a neighbor who that neighbor was a Chosid also of another group. 
that neighbor had a niece who was 19 years old, and Loyalino was very, very critical. The doctors gave up on her, they didn't know what to do. This Sansa Chosid tells a story. He went into his neighbor and he said, listen, you put a Sansa Chosid and you and the other Chosid, but I have to tell you something. The only one who could help your niece is the Lubaba Chorebbe. And I am advising you, fly to New York, get an appointment with Lubaba Chorebbe, and you'll see she's going to be helped. He figured, the doctor say cyber side. He came to New York, and when he came back, he told the sons of Husnid, I came into the Lubaba Chorebbe with my niece, and I tell the Rebbe, and I say, here I have all the medical reports that are saying what her situation is, and we don't know what to do. The Lubavitcher Rebbe says, I don't have to see the reports. Your niece is a healthy girl. She will get married, she will have children, and she will have grandchildren. But being that the Abishra wants that everything should go through a natural way, Go back to Yerushalayim, go to the Hadassah Hospital, go to the doctor by the name of Dr. First, and tell him that I sent you and that he should take care of your niece. He couldn't understand this. He's telling the Rebbe that the doctor said it's a question of time, and here the Rebbe said that she's a healthy girl. Okay. He came back and he tells his sons of Hussein, and I said, go right away to Hadassah Hospital, and see this doctor first as soon as possible. Okay, he came ahead. He shows doctor first the medical reports. Doctor says, I don't know what the Baba Sharaba wants from me. There's nothing that medically we can do. It's a lost case, so to say. But then he said, if the Baba Sharaba sent and he called to come to me, I will see what I could do. So he designated the day for the operation. He made the operation, he came back from the operation, and he says, I said to HaKadosh Baruch I did what I have to do in a natural way. The rest is up to you. Two weeks later, she was out of danger. Four weeks later, she was able to walk out of the hospital on her own, and today, she is a grandmother, she has kingdom, this surgeon, 40 years later, met this uncle of this girl. He grabbed him. He hugged him. He said, I have to tell you something. You remember that story with your niece? When I was operating, I didn't know what I'm doing. Somebody was pushing my hand. And I have to tell you that at that time, I didn't believe she will come out alive. You have to realize that the only thing that saved her is the Lord of Rebbe's bracha. And you should know, only for that she was saved. And so we have many, many such stories of factual stories. I'll tell you, my uh, with my mother, my mother was having a very serious cough. So she was sent to a long doctor. One the, the Rebbe actually gave the name of the doctor, one of the famous doctors in New York. He examined her, and he said, she has a cancer on her lung, and I don't know what we could do for it, but I'm gonna study it, come back in two weeks, I'll discuss with my colleagues what I want to do. I came back, the Rebbe asked me, what did the doctor say? And the Rebbe said, I take the responsibility, and that's what the way it said in Yiddish. She doesn't have such a thing, and she will have long life. When we came back two weeks later, this big doctor says, I have to apologize. I saw something on her lung, and to me it appeared to be a cancer. But it seems that when she was young, she had some infection over there, and the residue remained on the lung. But it's not a cancer, it's a goldish. And Baruch Hashem, my mother lived nine years after that time. Here the Rebbe is sent to a doctor, and the doctor says so and so, and the Rebbe says, of Yiddish, of of minor places, I take on my shoulders that it's not what he said, and see you told him, 
The Rebbe, why is the Rebbe telling us, why is the Rebbe doing it? Because Abbas is wrong. The Abish that gave him the ability that he should be able to do things. He was at one time a case that a woman called and said that her husband is very sick. And the doctors, unfortunately, are not helping him. Although she's not so religious, but her religious friends told her that she should ask the Lubavitcher Rebbe for Brahim. So the Rebbe said that she should start lighting the candles out of Shabbos. Standing in the office, and the Rebbe came into the, uh, into the secretariat, into the office, and he hears that there's a discussion going on with someone. He picked up his hand, and he says, Stop, what is this conversation? So we told him that there's the woman that asked the Rebbe for her, brother, for her husband, and the Rebbe said, she should light the candles. So what? The one says she doesn't understand. What connection does my lighting candles have with my husband's getting well recovery? So the Rebbe says, tell her as follows. Why did she come to me? I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professor, I'm not a medical person. I assume that she believes that the Almighty gave me a power to advise and a power to bless. What difference does it make whether she understands the connection of her lighting candles for her husband's recovery, I'm saying again, tell her, if she'll start lighting the candles, her husband will get well. He said, you don't have to give into more discussions. The Rebbe left, went back to his office. A week later, she calls, and she said, you know, I said, okay. So this past Friday, I light the candles on time. I came Sunday to the hospital and I asked the doctors, there's a slight improvement. Oh, she came called the next week again. She came back on Sunday, it's getting better. After four weeks, the doctor said he could go home. So we told the new, you didn't understand the connection. We don't understand either. But when the Rebbe says he sees certain things and he sees what is the channel for your husband's recovery. Say here, again, but what is the Rebbe saying? You don't have to understand. We have to obey and we have to listen. Because they see things that we don't see. They hear things that we don't hear. And they understand the situation most better than us. And if you want to know something, there isn't a subject where the Rebbe does not introduce new ideas, whether it is medical, whether it's philosophy, whatever service you want, after the, the Six-Day War, yeah, the Six-Day War, one of the top military people from the Israeli army came to visit the Rebbe. When he came out of the room, his face was more red, it was like a tomato, like, more like this. I usually don't ask people what you had a private discussion with the Rebbe. He says, I have to tell you. He said, we made a very big mistake. You know that the headquarters of the Israeli army is in Tel Aviv. It's called Kiriya. That's the name of that area, the building and the whole section. We should have appointed the Lubavitcher Rebbe to be the head of that Kiriya. Could you explain yourself? He said, we sat down, we discussed, I came to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, I want to point out to you how many mistakes the Israeli army made in this war, which could have saved hundreds and hundreds of soldiers. The Rebbe was never in that role, he was never in the other area when it's role. And he said, I told the Rebbe, and I said, the Rebbe takes out a piece of paper, he takes his pencil, and he draws a map so to say, of Israel and Egypt and over here Lebanon and over here is Yardin. And the Rebbe goes into details. He says, over here, if you would have acted differently, when I would have advised you, you would have saved the soldiers here. You would have gone over here, you could have saved soldiers there. And I asked him, he said, the Rebbe is 100% right. That's why I say the Rebbe has to sit in the Kirya, when Mr. Begun, 
came to America to meet the American president and came to date, whatever is over there. So one of his associates was ordered by the, uh, the Prime Minister Begin to be by the Rebbe, give reports. After everything was over, so he came to give the Rebbe a final report. When he came out, he says, I'm going to tell our Prime Minister he should make a hotline between his office and the Rebbe's office. And before he makes a certain of important decision, call up the Rebbe and say, Rebbe, we're planning to do this. What is your advice? Because he says the Rebbe is able to run the country better than this prime minister. He knows better how to do it. The doctors, when they took care of the Rebbe after his heart attack, the Rebbe started asking them questions in physics, which they never heard before. They didn't know what to answer the Rebbe on it. And the Rebbe asked him questions. In physics, you have two things working against another. Who controls what? Does this one control the upper, the lower, and the Rebbe proved them that what physics discusses about the heart is contrary to the way the heart is actually functioning. And the Rebbe showed, I was standing there, there were five or six uh, doctors standing in the room, and the Rebbe asked them, how do you explain this? In physics it says this, and when you examine the heart, it's contrary to it over here. If it's mathematics, if it's law, the the uh, the uh, Supreme Judge of New York State came to the Rebbe. He comes out and says, I don't know what's going on over here. You know what the Rebbe told me? We have to change the whole Constitution. I said, Rabbi, what are you saying? <laughs> and the Rebbe said, I'll show you many, many places where one contradictions from one part or the other part. And the Rebbe looks at me, he says, you are a Supreme Court judge, tell me one area. He said, I don't know. And the Rebbe said, I'll give you three examples and there are many more. And he tells me, the Rebbe showed me that one area in the Constitution says this, it contradicts what it says in another place. And so he gave me, the Rebbe was knowledgeable of any subject that he spoke about, that people felt that he was at home over there, as if he was sort of only this, you know, and he was able to give advice Whatever it was. Why am I saying this? We're not making the Rebbe bigger, Chasper Sholem. When we tell stories of the Rebbe, he's not becoming holier, he's not becoming greater. It's just to give us that we should know what we're dealing with and how much we have to pay attention. Now, some people, of course, okay, I believe it. But when you see something factual and you see how this person is so knowledgeable and his ideas and his advice is always successful, encourage us more to do these things. So they shall help him that we should listen to the Rebbe more even if we don't understand and we'll never really understand what the Rebbe wants because there's always more deeper and deeper meanings and interpretations what the Taylor says and what the Rebbe says. And the thing that we should, we should take with us, as I said before, my father said, and it has to become part and parcel of your life from the learning of the Tanya and the Siyam and the Rambam of the Tanya and continuing now in the further chapters, the further deeper parts of the, of the Tanya. Each one should be encouraged and ask himself constantly, what is that doing to make me a better Yid? What is that doing to help me help, help another year to become a better year? And that has to be, I would feel, some of the main points of what we're gathering tonight and ask ourselves, what is the same Hatanya mean for me? Well, they wish hope that each and every one of us should appreciate what the Tzadikim, the Rabbeim, are teaching us, and they wish hope that as a result, of following and doing more what the Rebbe says, that will be close in the time of the revelation of Mashiach, and we should see it from the Masoret I want to wish everyone a ksiva chasim ateva, a good deal, a gazun to you, and all the year. This year, it's Tov Shin Pei. Tov Shin Pei, one of the Rosh Hashivas, of the acronym, Tehei Shinas Petu Seinu. It should be the year of... Uh, then, Tev Shimpei, Tehei Shnas Parnosu. 
but everyone's going to have a lot of panasa this year. The heish nas poirio. Poirio means that it can more and more good things shall happen. So this year, the the the, the name of the, they say is the the, uh, 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 the, uh, the word of the of the year. Tov Shempei is to bring to us so many brainy brachas, and Hashem shall help that we shall see the Madam Atzerchem. Peheish nas poratsto. Okay, l'chaim l'chaim everybody. And we should only have a good news one from another. And the main Amen. thing we should, we should see the Rebbe take over from the yard. Amen. 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 All right. <laughs> <laughs> add, add more and more good things to it. Amen.